Supreme Court and uh, the House has just adjourned and they will be coming back on the 11th of November to hear the substantive case. Now, many will be asking, so what has been going on since morning? Well, we'll try and break it down for you when we connect to our reporters on the ground in court to update us on how far we have gone regarding the Speaker's decision to declare four seats vacant. Now, the substantive case, I'm sure, uh, probably will get further and uh, better clarity on that. But the substantive case has to do with whether the Speaker had the jurisdiction in the first place to even declare or rule on those four seats and declare them um, as, um, as vacant. So <clears throat> the members of Parliament who occupied those seats, if Parliament were to be in session, would have to come back and uh, you know, do parliamentary business. But since morning, the Supreme Court had been listening to arguments from three lawyers. One is lawyer for the Speaker of Parliament, Thadia Sori. One is speaker, one is the lawyer for the, uh, the leadership of the NPP in Parliament. That's in the person of um, uh, Alexander Fenyomarkin. And then the third lawyer was representing the uh, government, that is the Attorney General. Now, these three gentlemen have been arguing for and against why they thought that the speaker, first of all, erred in his decision to declare four seats vacant. If we do a backstory, you'll remember that Apeño Markin, who is the, the then leader of the NPP in parliament, asked the speaker to hold on to declaring four seats vacant or to even rule on the four seats. But after a long debate in parliament, the issue went to the uh, Supreme Court and today, Lawyers for these three institutions or three individual uh, representations made their argument in court. The leadership of the Supreme Court or the judges of the Supreme Court went on recess to think through the arguments that had been made and returned and gave a ruling. The first ruling we heard a few minutes ago during the, the afternoon show when we came in to tell you that the House had returned from recess or the court had returned from recess was on one the issue about the order that the speaker's lawyer, Thaddeus Sorry, had sent to the Supreme Court. So let me just try and clarify this for you. When the Speaker of the House declared the four seats vacant, he had already been in informed that the issue had been sent to the court, so he should wait to hear what the court mm -hmm. said. A day after declaring the four seats vacant, the Supreme Court also issued uh, an order reversing that decision by the speaker where they asked him to stay execution, meaning do not um, execute the plan or the order you have given. So don't say that those four seats have been declared vacant. Now, parliament at the time had adjourned. When they returned, the confusion was regarding who becomes majority, who becomes minority. Now we recall that on Tuesday, a few weeks ago, when parliament returned, the NDC sat on the right side of the speaker, which is the majority side. And when the NPP came in, there was a meeting with the speaker. And that was when Speaker Bagwin came and said that because the issue was in court and he had now been formally served with a writ regarding the case which is in the Supreme Court, he is adjourning Parliament sine die, or he is adjourning Parliament uh, indefinitely. So it will take them some time to allow the courts to also think through the issue. Now today the court has been sitting from morning up until now. Now when the, uh, the judges returned from their second recess, they said that they uh, disagreed with the order from the speaker asking them to rescind their decision. We'll go to the phone lines shortly to engage some of my, uh, my colleagues who are in court for, uh, for an understanding of uh, right okay so I, i'm told that we do have uh, lawyer martin pebu on the line for some clarity or some legal perspective to what has been happening it's been a long legal day mr pebu good afternoon and thank you for joining us on tv3 yes good afternoon yeah, is this martin yes this is martin thank you for joining us Okay, to, yes, to, yes. To, to start with, I'm sure you've been following proceedings at the Supreme Court. First of all, what would your uh, initial comments be about the uh, few issues that the judges heard? They went on recess, came back, 
gave a ruling, then a second recess came back, gave another ruling, and now the house, uh, I beg your pardon, the court has adjourned to the 11th of November. What are your preliminary uh, thoughts on today's proceedings? I, I was hoping today the decisions that the court would give would help bring a resolution of the constitution crisis, meaning that the decision would be one that would at least appeal to the speaker in such a way that he would immediately want to uh, recall parliament, to summon parliament. But to the extent that his application to set aside the Supreme Court decision of 18th October was thrown out. That is to say, the court didn't agree that the court had done anything wrong. It appears to me that the speaker would also go into the constitution and there are few small uh, constitutional provisions to, you know, hit back at the Supreme Court. So it appears this, uh, I don't want to call it drama, maybe crisis. So it appears this constitutional crisis is not over yet. Mm. And the substant some of the substantive issues that were heard, or probably they may not be the substantive, but they were part of the, uh, the entire hearing process. One of it being the decision of the speaker's lawyer or the speaker asking the court to actually rescind their order to him, not to, uh, to the order of the Supreme Court to the speaker to stay execution. The court said that they disagreed with the speaker and that it was uh, not going to stand. What do you make of that particular ruling they gave? Yes, that is to say, when the speaker made a declaration of four seats, said the four seats had become vacant, and the Supreme Court said, no, it should be a state of execution, right? Yes. Yes, that, that is the heart of the matter. I was hoping that today the Supreme Court would have reversed this decision or done something that would appeal at least to the speaker. You see, in law, there are a thousand and one ways of killing a cat. So I was hoping that the speaker would come away with something. But this one, the speaker is lost totally. In circumstances where I think he could have won something. You see, Martin, let's be very clear. It's the same law we are interpreting, the constitution and all the laws. From where I sit, I could have given the speaker something. I wouldn't have thrown out the speaker's application. The same law that the Supreme Court judges used. I would have used the same, and I would have given the uh, speaker's, uh, what do you call it, lawyer something. You see, you do it in such a way that they too will fill a part of the process, but to totally dismiss the application, <laughs> I think it's likely that the speaker may not cooperate in opening parliament. You see, as we are doing, we are building a nation, you know, law. We call it uh, this is social engineering. You fashion laws to help build society. So if you look at that from the jurisprudential view, that law is used for social engineering, okay? Because there's that dispute, you see the speaker is speed. So if you, and why is he speed? The main thing that most lawyers, I'm going to use the one that is easier to explain, the one that most, most lawyers will agree, because there are other ones, lawyers will disagree. But the one that's easy to get many lawyers to agree is that on the 18th of October, the Supreme Court made the order that we are suspending the speaker's decision till they finish hearing the Supreme Court case. Now, that order that you are suspending the hearing, uh, the, the speaker's decision, that his declaration of four seats vacant, you are suspending that decision till you finish hearing the case, is too wide and too long. So even if it takes three months, whatever, you know, until this pressure, Supreme Court cases take sometimes a year, two, etc., right? Even this one, that they are trying to hear very expeditiously. You see, we are coming back for judgment on the 11th of November. Certain things can happen, and maybe 11th of November, we may not have the judgment, etc. So what I expected was that they would have reviewed their decision and say, okay, they are no longer saying to the end of the case. They are canceling that part out. And then after you, if you want that decision to stay, he should file a new application and serve the speaker. Then they will come back and argue fully why that order should be made to the end of the case. That's what most lawyers will agree. Listen, if you want to see how most lawyers will agree, you can check the 18th of October. When lawyer Abedu came for the stay of execution, he said he wants it for only 10 days. That is what 
we do in court. Every lawyer will tell you that when you come alone to the judge, when you come, what we call ex party, if you sue somebody, but you don't serve him when you want injunction or fear of execution, and you go alone to the judge, you don't tell the judge that you want me to give the order, the order will stay till the end of the case. If it is one year, two years, four years, ten years, it will stay. No. Usually, you ask the judge for only ten days so that within the ten days, you try and go and find the other person to serve him. And this case, they didn't do so. And, I mean, the lawyer did the right thing. He said he wanted it for only ten days. Then the Supreme Court didn't uh, restrict it to ten days. He made it for the rest of the case. So that is that part that I would have reversed it and allow the speaker to come and argue why he should not go to the end. So that way you get his buy-in. If you allow him to have his day in court on that order, you are giving him a, you are getting a buy-in because his lawyers will present a full argument. So there are those things that we could have used, and all of that would have helped to reduce the tension. But to have just thrown out the speaker's lawyer's uh, application, everything, hmm, it's likely... Lawyer Bagbin will find something in the Constitution and also show the Supreme Court that he also has power. So as it stands, it means that Parliament cannot sit or the Speaker may not be able to recall Parliament because uh, a, a, from the last adjournment, we heard him give indications that because the case was in court, we probably would all have to wait and see. So up until the 11th of November, we shouldn't be expecting anything happening from Parliament. You would agree? Oh, okay. I, I, I didn't hear that part. I thought he said he was a journalist in the to go and do consultations. I didn't hear that he said he wants the Supreme Court to finish hearing the case. Hey, then if that is so, then it means he will come on Parliament on the 11th of November. Because the court says that they will give judgment. Mm. They will deliver. Right. Wow. So we still have about, let's say, today is 30th, maybe 12, 13 days to go. Yes. And, and maybe before you take leave of us, uh, one other issue that the lawyers raised, uh, that is the Tadio, sorry, lawyer for the speaker, was that they wanted Justice Ernest Jeu or Gaiu, I actually do not uh, have clarity on the pronunciation of his name, but he was Gaiu. asking Gaiu. 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 Okay, they were asking him to recuse himself from the uh, five member panel, but after recess, when the judges returned, they dismissed that as well. And they were asking him to recuse himself because of his open, publicly known support for the NPP. In fact, he stood on the ticket of the NPP to campaign as a parliamentary candidate. And the, 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 the chief justice said that they do not agree with that call for him to recuse himself. Uh, as a lawyer, you agree with the court? No, 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 no. Martin, you know me. I'm sure <laughs> you know the answer. In the thousand years, I would never agree with the court. Look, the easiest the court would have done was to have sustained that objection and then simply replace uh, Justice Gaiwu. Of course, Gaiwu is a fine judge, etc. But like you said, he stood as a parliamentary candidate on the ticket of the NPP. So with this part of the record, the ordinary man hearing this, we see that, ah, then that's why the decision went where it went. So you see, when it comes to Optics. It's very, 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 very important. The optics have to be right. There are over 10 other Supreme Court judges, so they should have just uh, 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 recused the guy who embraced on a different judge. Because once you allow him to sit, everybody will say, ah, because he's MPP. So the reason the court gave that Parliament approved him, uh, with due respect, I don't agree. It doesn't look good. The optics look very, 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 very bad. Mm. Lawyer, thank you so much uh, for your time and uh, your thoughts on this very fluid subject. Martin Pebu is a private legal pr practitioner and uh, was trying to help us make sense of what's happened in court. So we have been joined also by Joseph Akable, a man who's been following this for us at the Supreme Court, for a quick wrap of, first of all, how all of these proceedings have gone since morning. Joseph, uh, thank you for joining us. If you can hear me, I would want you to first walk us through the latter part of the sittings. The Chief Justice led the panel and said that adjournment until the 11th of November, then they will hear the substantive case. What would the substantive case be in this context? The substantive case, Martin, in this context is the question of interpretation that was submitted to the court by 
Alexander Fenomate, uh, which is asking the court to interpret the said constitutional provision as for 97 on what it means when we say that someone has vacated his seat by virtue of uh, deciding to file to contest as an independent candidate or maybe switching parties, for instance. So that is the substantive case that the court will be given an answer to. And that is expected to provide some clarity and guidelines on whether uh, that amounts to cost capital or it shouldn't amount to cost cap capital, whether it should take effect in the next parliament, whether it should take effect in this parliament, whether it is an issue of when the person is staying in parliament and remains on the same caucus or is moving on to the other side. All these matters uh, which have become the thorny issues are what the court should be dealing with on the 11th. But the AG did make a request that he wants the lawyers to be heard on that day. And so the, the sense we get from the Chief Justice is that the hearing will take place on that day, then the court may adjourn on that day and either return on the same day to give its ruling, or depending on how it goes, they may decide otherwise. But at least on the 11th, we are likely to be a step closer to the resolution of this particular dispute matter. Right, and, and uh, Joseph, we also heard, I mean, the last ruling that the panel gave had to do with the decision of the speaker to ask them to actually rescind their order to the, uh, the speaker of parliament where Tadio Sori made the argument that they did not have or they could have reconsidered their decision. The Supreme Court shouldn't have written to the speaker. Walk us through the fine details of what exactly his argument was and what the Chief Justice said in dismissing that argument by Thadio Sori and um, by extension the Speaker of Parliament? I mean, right from uh, the, the, the beginning of this particular matter, we know that the Speaker's legal team uh, have taken quite a strong position on this. Uh, they hold the view simply that the Supreme Court's jurisdiction was not triggered properly. That is to say that the case that was presented to the Supreme Court was not one that the court ought to have heard and dealt with. Again, they make the point that the orders that were delivered by the Supreme Court on that October 18 were in the nature that were problematic and they sinned against the time-tested principles which have been laid out by the Supreme Court. And those are arguments that did not find favor uh, with the Chief Justice. The Chief Justice, in her ruling, did state that, uh, make reference to the fact that in the original decision, they had explained why they arrived at those conclusions, making reference to how these members of parliament will be denied the presentation, for instance, and making the point that the speaker in taking that decision was not just taking a decision against the individuals, but also affected the rights of other individuals beyond uh, the four of them because they represent constituencies. She again made reference to the fact that within the period, we also know that a by-election also cannot take place. Again, she made reference to the issues regarding the deputy speaker of parliament, the second deputy speaker of parliament, for instance, where that also affected in terms of parliamentary leadership as well. And so, all in all, the point that she made was to the effect that, look, Article 2 of the Constitution empowers the Supreme Court to interpret the Constitution. And whenever a person makes an allegation and they are obvious that the parties in the matter have rival means, the court is the right forum for us to interpret that particular provision. It made, well, it made notice of the fact that during the discussions in Parliament, you recall the issue of service. The court, the system just explained that that was an administrative direction that had come out and they indicated that because of those engagements, it cannot defeat the fact that the, the, the uh, Speaker of Parliament was well aware of the requests that had been made uh, in terms of the fact that there's a case pending at the Supreme Court, for which reason the matter ought to have been stayed and he, he ought to have delivered his decision, but nonetheless proceeded to deliver that. And so the court effectively stands by its October 18 decision to say that, yes, it was right in putting the Speaker's decision on hold because on the balance of convenience as to who stands to suffer more if the speaker's decision is allowed to stand, came to the conclusion that suspending the speaker's directive is in the interest of Justice Martin. Mm. And uh, maybe in wrapping up this conversation, we, sh we saw, uh, maybe it's subject to interpretation though, but we saw that the Chief Justice was getting quite emotional at the point where she veered into the arena of making statements along the lines of, we are a country where the parliament isn't sitting. What kind of situation is that? So in that context, many said that she was uh, becoming emotional about the, the, the case. Well, you probably might want to have a word or two on that and then conclude by telling us what she meant when she told Tadio Sorry after the ruling she gave that they should file um, their responses or arguments. Uh, what exactly was the order to Tadio Sorry? 
Well, so in terms of the order that was directed at Tadio, sorry, it is to the effect that you recall on the 18th, they had given directions that they were asked to file their statement of defense and they also memorandum of issues. And so the formal response that the speaker has to the substantive case on how the said provision should be interpreted. Then the second is the memorandum of issues is simply the legal issues that the lawyers believe arise from this dispute that the court ought to answer in its ruling. So those are the matters that they've asked them to file uh, before they come back on the 11th. In terms of the engagement that took place, uh, you realize that during that engagement, Atalio sorry did point out to uh, the, 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 the Chief Justice that that's not why uh, a Parliament is not sitting. And at that point, she said that, well, she's going to take what he's saying. And that, that ended it. I mean, those are, are comments that once in a while we see come up. And in the course of these proceedings, we even saw various engagements and banters between the judges and the lawyers in this particular matter. But all those form part of uh, the engagement with regards to this particular uh, high public interest case that took place here at the Supreme Court matter. Right, Joseph Akabli, thank you so much uh, for that report from the Supreme Court of Ghana, where a few minutes ago they adjourned to the 11th of November to hear the substantive case. And uh, Joseph also gave us clarity on what that substantive case is. It is that the Supreme Court will now, on the 11th of November, come and listen to arguments from the three lawyers again as regards what Article 97, 1G and H means when a member of parliament decides to vacate their seats or cross carpet, or if they came in as independent candidates and now want to join a political party, which is the case we have on our hands where four seats have been declared vacant, what exactly does it mean? And that is why the Supreme Court would be sitting on the 11th of November. And why is it the Supreme Court? Because per the Constitution, they are the only mandated body by the powers of the Constitution to interpret, to interpret what the law says or what the Constitution says. It's fascinating to know also that although you read it in plain English, it may not necessarily be so because they may have to be read uh, in tandem with other provisions in the Constitution. So then it brings better and further clarity to what Article 97, 1G and H mean. So we'll leave it here for now. Uh, join us on News 360 where we try and get further legal understanding of what all of these means and then also look forward to the 11th of November 2024. This has been our coverage of today's hearings at the... Uh, Supreme Court. I am Martin Esiedudati. We are your election command center. We do this because it has political undertones and definitely could impact going into the next elections on December 7, 2024. Stay with us. There's more to come. Back to regular programming. Bye for now.